Welcome. I'm Anne Moody, a relieving chaplain at Selwyn Oaks in Papakura. Today's reading from John, chapter 10, beginning at verse 1 and finishing at verse 10, tells us how Jesus wants us to understand that he is not only the shepherd, but also the gate. The reading finishes with the words, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. What does that mean? We are in a period in which there is an abundance of time as we are in our bubbles. There is time for reflection, for prayer, for reading our scriptures, as many of us cannot see our loved ones and friends. It is a hard time and we need to hear that message of hope from Jesus, that he is always with us and wants us to hear. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So let's look at these words. This speaks of restored relationship with God, which enables us to become fully human. We have to model that relationship with God in our relationships with ourselves and with others. At present, that is hard for many of us as contact is difficult unless we can use some of the digital media available. So what about abundant life for the sheep? Shepherds in early times had a flock of about 100, which they kept primarily for their wool. They were kept in a sheep fold at night for protection from sheep stealers of both the human and animal variety. Jesus wants us to understand who he is not. Those who climb in the wrong way were there for their own gain. They did not have good intentions. The gatekeeper was not there to keep people out as all are welcome by the gate. Several flocks could be kept in the sheepfold. So in the morning, the shepherd would stand outside and call his sheep. They knew their shepherd's voice and would follow. The shepherd would then lead them to green pastures. They were led, they were not driven. There is a gentleness in that image. It reminds me a little of the Pied Piper of Hamelin, a poem us oldies learned at school, only it is about rats. The sheep in this parable know where they are going. They know they will be fed. They know they will be called by name. They feel safe and protected. Jesus wants us to understand he is the shepherd and that he also is the gatekeeper. One author says, the truth of I am is also a gate with two sides. One side is man on earth and the other side is God in heaven. And through that gate of I am, the love of the human race goes up to God and the love of God comes down on the human race. So the gatekeeper provides protection for the sheep and they are led out by the shepherd who cares for them. They know his voice and follow him. The Pharisees did not understand and so Jesus reworded this parable. He is telling them that those who entered the sheepfold not through the gate were thieves and bandits. They were not from God. These people were the political leaders of Israel and the rulers of occupying nations such as Babylon, Greece and Rome. And also, sadly, religious leaders who were more interested in their own ego and following the rules than listening to God. Once again, I think what we can hear is that the shepherd has time for his sheep. There is time for getting to know the sheep. Time is a precious commodity, and yet it is that which gets drowned in shoulds and oughts. I should know. I'm a classic one at doing the shoulds, and yet I enjoy doing most of them. Contrary creatures, us humans. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. God sent Jesus to help us understand what our task is. 
God sent Jesus to deliver the good news of this gift of time for our relationship with God, self and others. God sent Jesus to call into community all who want to live this way. People who want to know God's love and care for them. We want to be those people who come in and go out as the sheep did through the gate. We all want to experience that kind of freedom. We all want to experience the kind of care and protection described by Jesus. Jesus is the one who promises this kind of protection to all who desire to be part of his flock. Much hinges on our stewardship of time. At present, most of us are struggling to know what day it is as one day merges into another. And yet, there is a peacefulness about it. There is time, as Jesus wants us to do, to reflect on life and living and, yes, regret things not done and a time to celebrate the joys we have had in our lives. I'm so grateful to be part of this village right now as I feel safe. Have I done everything I wanted to? No. And yet, does it matter? It doesn't. There's always tomorrow. Earlier this week, Pam spoke about the simple things of life, and I think it is so important that we can do that. Live in the moment. Look out at the trees. Maybe there are flowers you can see or birds flying past. The staff who care for us, they all remind us of the goodness of life. I do miss worshipping together in the chapel and yet I know it will be there when this is over. Perhaps the question we should be asking ourselves is what is God trying to tell us in this time? Maybe it is to slow down. To work together better to tell each other daily how much we appreciate the help we receive, to acknowledge the love we feel in our friendships and in our families. The shepherd was always there for the sheep. It was their livelihood. In these, our latter years, there are some hard things to accept, and yet there are some wonderful memories of joy, celebration, and of wholeness of life. The good news is that our God wants us to experience an abundance of all that really matters. Our God wants to take care of our needs. Our God has supplied us with particular care of our needs by the giving and sharing of our gifts and community. The way we live our lives tells others of our knowing of that love and protection that God provides for us and yes, may attract to them to inquire what gives us meaning in our lives. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. We will now listen to the hymn, The Lord is My Shepherd, and then I will finish with a prayer and a blessing. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want he makes me lie in pastures green he leads me by the still still waters his goodness restores my soul and i will trust in you Trust in you for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home. He guides my ways in i
in whom we find the love of a shepherd. May we hear, embody, embody, and follow this love in our lives. May our lives show to others the joy and abundance we know in your faithful love for us and all people. Amen. So now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.